Well, I'm excited to uh, be joined by two guys that mean a lot to the organization, mean a lot to me personally, and uh, to have you guys together. I appreciate uh, you guys taking the time. What I'd like to do here, I, I want to kind of start at the beginning and walk through kind of current day and just kind of dive in and, and uh, talk about all the experiences you guys have together. And I want to start when... In three minutes? <laughs> in three minutes. <laughs> Maybe four. Four and a half. Okay. Uh, but I want to start when you guys came in the organization. You come in differently. Yada, you come in drafted. Wayno, you come in uh, in, a, in a big trade, the, the big name in the trade. There's pressure on both of those. You come in having two brothers, you know, been in Major League Baseball, um, and kind of having that name and that on your back. Wayno, you come in, you know, with that trade. What's that like coming into the Cardinal organization? To take me back to your first few days of coming in. First of all, I met the first time I met when I was facing him in minor league, like a year before we get together in Memphis. And I was like, this dude have, I mean, this dude for real. And then we hired him, we made that deal for him. I was like, wow, we, we got a good guy, you know? And then I met him, I was disappointed, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry. Just kidding. Uh, so we got together in Memphis, I was like, wow, this guy's for real. And then they called me on, and then next year, um, in all seats, this guy was ready to go. And then I was just glad to have him on that team. And then we did it, we won that championship. And that was awesome. What's it like for you? Coming? He nailed it. Yeah. Uh, good for me to be traded over for one thing because uh, just where I was in the Braves organization, a top prospect, but didn't make a good name for myself within the organization. It was really late every day and didn't work hard and um, got a chance to get a fresh start over here. And so I got to come over here and, and be around some really, really great people that. Um, that for, for the first time I was around great people over there too. I just didn't listen to them. You know, I didn't pay attention enough. And over here, I, I got the chance to kind of start over. And uh, in in 2004 was when we started playing together in spring training. Um, funny thing was the the Cardinals Double A team was the one that gave me fits. You know, the the Cardinals High A team the year before in Potomac was the easiest team I've ever faced in my entire life. And they were they were like a high school team with Skip Schumacher on it. <laughs> Of course. And then the next day, or the next year, their team was really loaded. They had Bucky, right. what was Bucky's last name? Jacobson. Bucky Jacobson and yeah, Papa Bolivar. Papa Bolivar. Yeah, all those guys. Yachty Me, and, and uh, so there's a little infielder that was really good too. Was in like a Cano, uh, Cosme. Yeah, Cosme. Now Cosme. Yep. And that was just and Skip was in center field and the, the whole team was all stars, you know. And they were really tough. They gave me fits. The manager was DJ. And he was yeah. tough to pitch against because he'd, he'd let you know about stuff, talking to you out on the field. But uh, getting to come over here and throw to Yachty right away was a different experience. I'd never seen a catcher like that before, ever. Even at that, even at that age, mm. you still had a lot of development to do, and, but still at that, you knew right away. Yeah, I knew right away. And what was cool is that when I was with the Braves organization, all coming up, I always called every pitch and never let the catcher call anything. And in fact, if the catcher called something, I'd, be, I'd figure out a reason why that wasn't the right pitch and call something else. And Yadi, I remember one of our first games, he pulled me aside and said, hey, you need to trust me. You need to stay with me right here and just, I know what I'm doing, you know, and, and we can call this game together. And it was really great for me to hear And that, that was easy for me to, to can't go to him and talk because I, in the past you have some guys that they don't want to listen. And then um, for me, they, uh, barely I know the language and then it's hard for me to communicate with the pitcher at that time. And, um, but he made it easy for me. He was a nice person to me. And, and that's why we're still brothers. Because if he gave me some trouble back then, right now I was like. <laughs> <laughs> but no, back then it was, you know, it take care of me a lot. And I'm glad for that. So early on, almost every player has has a moment or somebody that, that's really had an impact on their career. And, and typically early on. And with you having your brothers in it, it in the game, um, but they weren't here with you in the organization. And I know Dave Ricketts means a lot yeah. to you. And I know this, I've heard a lot of stories of yeah. how Ricketts kind of took you from being a young, stiff catcher to, to really helping you stretch and open you up that way. And Adam, you talk about how coming over here, you were late and you didn't do things the right way. Well, something had to shift on that. So what, what was that, that that helped you? Was that somebody here? You, uh, for me, it was, I mean, Dave Rickett was the person that, that changed my life. Obviously, when I came over here, my dad, my mom, they, they all helped me out there. But knowing the game, knowing calling game, knowing about the catcher, the position of the catcher, Dave Rickett did a good job. I'm, I'm just so glad to be here 
with them and spending most time with him. He gave me a tough time, you know, because he cared. And and at that time, I didn't understand that, but I'm so simple, so glad that I was there for him, with him. At that and what time. were some of those things he was tough on you? First of all, when you had to wake up at 5 a.m. every day, seven <laughs> seven day a week, uh, that's, that's tough. And then other stuff, you know, the mental part, you know, it teach me to be a, a real man, you know, like a grown man. And then all the different stuff, you know, he pushed me so hard, you know, like, uh, because he really wanted me to be the best. And uh, at the first, I didn't understand. And then the soon I got it, I was like, wow, I, I want to be next to him for forever. Yeah. And you know that story, I'm sure, of Mike Matheny tells of Dave Ricketts picked him up one day. You were in minor league camp and puts him on the golf cart and says, come here. And he takes you back and says, this is the, this is the future best catcher in baseball. And, and Mike said, I'm looking at this guy, and he can't squat. He's stiff. You know, his hands are, you know, his hands are pretty good. But the, the, I'm looking at it like, what are you talking about? And he's like, and surely, you know, he, he was able to see it that far ahead and just knew that there was some things to work on, and, but he knew he could break through and, and get to that. Yeah, he got so much patience with me. I mean, he helped me, he helped me a lot. He, he, pushed me, he pushed me so hard, but at the same time, he got patient with me, and he worked with me. Um, on both sides, he worked in physical and mentally, and uh, be thankful for that. I, th I think uh, one thing that a message that needs to be heard probably is that Yadi and I had something in common that he and I came straight from little league, middle school, high school, right into professional baseball, like a lot of us did. But you know, when you're thrown into a, a situation where you're 17, 18 years old. You don't have any parents around for the first time ever. Okay. You're a product of who you hang around, and uh, it's it's it can be a hard challenge. It's just like going off to college, right? I mean, co guys that come out of college are they're a little they're a little they take pro ball a little easier sometimes because they've been in a format where you know you you got to be here at class, you got to be you got to be here at practice on time. The, the coach kind of teaches you how to run and, and and do all that stuff and be a hard worker sometimes. And then you come over here, but but uh, when you don't have that sort of in high, in high school or anything, and you just get thrown right into a, a professional baseball situation where the best athletes in the world are all competing, you know, and you just got a signing bonus. Yeah, you just got a lot of money right. for the first time. You never had two nickels to rub together in your life, and all of a sudden now you've been given money. You know, that's there could be a lot of uh, things to distract you in that. So uh, your answer, your question was who, who made a difference on me. And when I was traded over here, I was traded with Jason Marquis. And you know, a, lot of, a lot of the times you hear me talk about Carp and his influence in me and uh, some of the other pitchers. But what the story I really don't do a good enough job of telling is that Jason Marquis really took me under his wing and made me go to the field with him. And after practice every day, we would hang out and and we would talk, and he'd never let me pay for anything, and he, he made sure I was on time. And he this is spring training. This is prior to yeah, making the team. Spring training, yeah, in two thousand four. I mean, I was still a year and a half away from being in the big leagues, but but guys like Jason really really made a big impact on me. You know, they they taught me how to be a professional, and and, and those other names, Chris Carpenter and Woody Williams and Jeff Supon and and Matt Morris, all those guys had a had their own roles. And Braden Looper, they had their roles in teaching me little things here and little things there to kind of piece me into what you become, but. You know, without great people around you as an 18, 19, you know, 20 year old kid with a, with um, lots of distractions left and right, I mean, you can, it's hard to stay focused sometimes. You need those, those older guys to shepherd you into the right direction sometimes. Yeah. I, agree, I agree with that. I mean, obviously, you, you got to have the attitude, attitude to listen and, and understand what's going on. And, um, if you got the bad attitude, it's gonna take you a while to get to get where you want to be. But if you got the right attitude, you know, to listen and to work hard, um, like that's gonna you're gonna be where you want to be like sooner. Than later. So you guys make it to the big leagues, Yadi. You're there a little bit earlier. Um, what is that like when you first get there? There's still obviously a lot of adjustments that need to be made. Um, and, and Yadi, that you're there in 04 when when you're going to the World Series. When you come up at the end of 05 and then 06 have a huge role in that run there. But what's that that first few years of trying to you know you guys are big names at this point. You are big prospects to come up and kind of adapt and adjust to to the major league level and fit into a team that has a lot of veterans on. I mean, for me, it was easy. I mean, because we got um, 
guys around us that take care of us. I mean, the only the only thing I had to be worried is about playing the game, and I know how to play the game. So, um, so I was lucky enough to have guys like Tony and Dave Duncan to help me out, and, and Okendo, uh, Pujols, you know, all those veterans like they take care of me, you know, like tell me hey, this is how we prepare to win the game, and um, that was a hard part. The hard part, but playing the game was simple for me, I mean, because I know how to play the game. And those teams back then were so different than our teams now. I mean, if you looked around the the whole field, it was like an average of 32, 33, yeah. 34 years old. I mean, it, Reggie Sanders, Larry Walker, you know, you had... Tony uh, Womack. And Tony, Tony Womack. Yeah. Albert was one of the young guys. Yeah. You had um, Scott you know, Mark Cruzalonic and... Edgar Renneria and Mike Matheny and all these people, you know, that were, were there when we first got here. And the pitching staff was, you know, all super veteran guys. Rui, yeah. Matt Morris, Mordor. Yeah. All those guys, you know, yeah. Supan. In the bullpen, Clark. you had Izzy and Cal Eldred. Cal was 40. You know, you had <laughs> you had uh, Julian Tavares. Yeah. <laughs> all these guys. I mean, it was, it was just, a, you know, Yachty and I are ancient. Yeah. For compared to all these guys, and we had a whole team of those dudes. You know, it was just a different. It was a different. It was a different time, and uh, they, like Yadi said, they really took care of us. They really yeah. kind of showed us the way because you know you, we don't get to where we are right now without great people leading us. There. So you go to 06. You know that that year, everybody knows that team was you know not the best team coming in. You guys kind of squeak in at the end, um, and then all of a sudden catch fire. I, I feel like people think that that World Series ended in New York. They, they forget about the next series that happened in Detroit because that, that series was so incredible. Um, but talk about that a little bit, just that playoff and, and that experience you had there. And then, you know, what it's like to be a young player to step up on that stage amongst David Eckstein and, and guys like that on the team that have, you know, huge names and reputations already. I think uh, for me it was, I mean, sometimes you got a good, really good season that you can win the division for 10 games and then you get relaxed. Uh, for a couple week, and then not not in all city. All city we were fighting and fighting the whole day. Every game means something, and then we get to uh, to the playoff, and like everything ship. You know, like okay, we've been fighting for the whole year. Now we just had to keep playing the same way we've been doing the whole year, and that's what we did. I mean, um, back in San Diego, the first division series. I mean, that was. I mean, winning two games over there, that was like wow. We can we really can do this, and then we got that. The right time, we we get hot in the right time, and that's how we did. That that at bat in New York is that your one of your best well, memories? Yes, in in your whole career. Yeah, basically, you know, like for me, being from Puerto Rico, and then that team in off season, it's like twenty guys in New York Med that's been from Puerto Rico, twenty players, like in the whole system. Um, Bertrand, Delgado, Tony Valentin, all those guys. So Puerto Rico is like basically. They rooting for for the best to win, and then and then only my family was rooting for me. And then when I hit that homer, when I hit that homer, everybody was like quiet. I mean, the shit stadium, the the New York stadium, or the Mets stadium was quiet. Even in Puerto Rico, everybody was quiet. And then, but well, it was a great great moment for me, great moment for our team, for our city, for everybody. Um, I'm gonna remember that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still uh, sometimes almost cry. Like, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> Chair was like, hey, look for Chenjo. I was thinking fastball. They told me it's hanging Chenjo. I hit it out. I was like, Aaron Harmon. Yeah, yes. I was like, this is really happening. Like, and then, of course, it's happened. And we did it. We mm -hmm. You know what I remember is going down the stretch. First of all, you had to remember we had Pujols, Scott Rowland, and Jim Edmonds in the middle of the lineup. Yes. Which, I mean, to piece along with all the other incredible players we had, but you, you need three big guys to get it done. And we had three of the biggest guys there were at that time. I mean, those guys are superstars. Right in the middle of the lineup. And we could not win a game down the stretch. We couldn't win a game. Uh -uh. And uh, we ended up winning on the last day because John Smoltz shut out the Astros. Mm -hmm. We didn't even win. We didn't win our game. He shut out the Astros. Oh, no, Carp. Oh, Carp shut. That's right. Yeah, yeah Carp did. Carp shut out somebody with a two hitter. Yes. Yeah, Carp complete game shut out. Yeah, two hit. Yeah, and then Smoltz beat the Braves. <clears throat> and we won like uh, a half the a game. Phillies. The Phillies. 
Small, yeah, yeah, sorry. Philly beat Philly the Braves. Beat. That's right. Yeah. The Braves beat the Phillies. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, Philly yeah. beat the Braves. No, yes. Smoltz was pitching with the Braves. No. The Philly won the game. And uh, uh, Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman. You're thinking 11. Oh, yeah, that was 11. Oh, that was 11. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll Smoltz, we'll Smoltz shuts the Astros out. And uh, Clark. Huh? Clark. No, Smoltz. Carp the Braves. Too. Carp, he, Carp shut oh, out. that was it. Yeah, that was a Why I'm confused? Yeah, that's okay. I, I don't think we won our game. That was six. <laughs> Pretty sure we lost. But we then, lost the last game. We did. And yeah. Smoltz shut uh, out the Astros. I remember. So we only won because they got us in. But I remember the feeling as soon as we knew that we won, it was like, oh, now, now we, we go. go. I yeah. mean, it was like, you know, we were, we were playing so tense and tight. And th- with this, just really, I mean, we really did have an incredible team, you know, to put on the field. And then as soon as we got in, it was like, oh, now they're all in big, yeah. big trouble, you know, because we knew we were good. And we just, we now, now we have nothing to lose because nobody's expecting us to win now. That's right. And as soon as we got in, we were super dangerous. And then you taking over for a guy that one was your mentor and two, one of the, one of the biggest closers in Cardinal history. Um, because of an injury and you taking over that role on that stage um what what was that like well, i remember uh in it, it kind of in september was when that happened and uh the first opportunity went to Braden looper and Braden blew the save his first opportunity and then the next we didn't win games for it seemed like a week and then the next opportunity was against the brewers at home at bush stadium and we were down by we were down two nothing. Scott Spezio came up with the bases loaded, and he hit a bases clear and triple with two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning to go up a three to two. And then the next guy got out right away. Well, Braden was on the on the mound warming up. He was going to go in and pitch at the top of the ninth um, when we were losing. And I remember the phone rang and it said, "Sit Braden down, get Adam up." And that was my first real save opportunity. You know. Uh, if you look back, it'll say like I had four save opportunities, but that's just you know how that goes yeah. as a reliever. You pitch early in the game, you blow you know you, you blow the lead in the seventh. So uh, that was my first real save opportunity, and I remember thinking, "There's two outs. All right, this is awesome. Let's run." And I threw three pitches, and I went in and I closed the game out one two three. We went one two three and, and closed it out. And I threw three warm up pitches, and I didn't need <laughs> one of them. I had so much adrenaline going. I was so fired up and so ready to pitch in that game that it was not gonna. They were not gonna tie that game up. It was already over. Trying 97, 96. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then that carries you into. I mean, obviously you do well there, and that carries you into the whole playoffs. So yeah. is it a situation where you don't even know what's happening? You're just kind of, you know, you're in the game all of a sudden. Now all of a sudden you're the closer. You're having to answer questions about it, but you're just rolling because you're mm-hmm. you're in the postseason. Not too much time to think and worry about the situation. Yeah, you're in. and it made sense to me because. That year, as you know my story, I, I pitched every game like it was the last game of the World Series all season long. And then in the postseason, I just did the same thing. So it was like easy to me in my mind. Like I was supposed to do it because I was too young to really know how hard the game can be sometimes. Sometimes young players have an advantage yes. because they don't really know how hard things can be sometimes. And they're just supposed to. And yeah, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to win. It's no big deal, right? And, uh, and that's, a, that's a good lesson to learn and it's a good mindset to have. And so for me, it was like... Big whoop, you know, yeah, it's, it's just it's just another day at the ballpark. Of course I was supposed to, kind of like Yachty said. I mean, we were put into position to succeed. Yachty, or, uh, Dave Duncan and Tony did such a good job of bringing me along slowly and putting me in that moment when I was ready for it as opposed to just throwing me in there, you know, without without being prepared. I was prepared for that moment, so I succeeded. So did 06 change your career by winning that? Does it change? Does things change after that? Does it does it, one, are you a young player that kind of you're early on in your career, you go to the World Series, you win it, you think this is going to happen every year? Or do you think if you would have lost in 06, it would have created a different hunger or exposure? What, you know, how, how did that 06 World Series change you guys early on in your careers? For me, it changed a lot. I mean, obviously in both sides. I mean, like, uh, I, I got, like in 04, I was still like a young guy, you know, like 05, 06, and then I got a really tough season in 06, like the regular season, like hitting, offensive side, that I didn't know, I didn't find myself hitting. I mean, I was going good about catching and calling game, whatever, but after that playoff in 06, that we won everything, and then I was like, 
And this, I mean, this is all about, and then I started learning about my offensive side. That's when my career went off on that part. Yeah, I think it, it's still my biggest moment, you know, is New York. It's, it's probably maybe one of his, too. I and mean, we need to have some more moments, Yadi. Yeah, I know. It's been a long time since we've had some. Oh, we got. <laughs> but, you know, some people say, oh, that's sad. Your best moment is your rookie year. And I was like, yeah, we still won the World Series. That's not too sad. Don't feel too bad for me, you know. I've still had some really good moments since then. Um, but I think it, what you need at Bush Stadium with our great Cardinal fans, if you have a moment, like David Fries, David was with us for what, three yeah. or four years? Yeah. He'll never be forgotten mm-hmm. in St. Louis. And he'll probably be a Cardinal Hall of Famer That's right. because of that moment, you know. And, and we don't win the World Series without David Fries, so as it should be. Um, but there's, there's guys like that that have had moments, you know. Those, those, when Ozzie Smith hit that home run, if Ozzie Smith had been an all-star every year but not hit the dramatic home run, he wouldn't have been known for, you know, the same. He would have been known as the Wizard, and he wasn't great. But he had those moments, you know, those big-time moments. Will McGee had moments. You know, Bob Gibson had tons of moments, you know. So when you have that one moment, the Cardinal fans never forget you. And, and they borderline give you a standing O everywhere you go, you know, if you have something great like that happen. Our fans were just so incredible, so... Um, it changed our careers because it put us on the path to success and it put us in a different frame of mind with our fans. They looked at us like, these guys are winners. These guys are championships. I remember somebody told me, I think it was Tony, after Tony won that World Series, Bob Gibson walked up to him and said, hey, welcome to the Cardinals. Now that he had won, yeah. you know, he'd been there for years. And he's like, oh, now I mean, you're a Cardinal. Yeah, I remember him saying that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So how different was 11? And I know, Adam, for you, it was a lot different. But you having a few more years under experience, how, how was how different was it for both of you guys through that year? Different, obviously different team. Um, we got some young guys, you know, like a bunch of young guys. They can really play the game, and they know how to play the game. Um, um, that eleven was up and down too. I remember oh, we, yeah. we still, you know, we were talking about early. We confusing the day, but. We still at the last day, the last day, um, the last game on the regular season, the car, the car, throw the chair out. Um, that was against the Astros. Yeah, against yeah. the Astros. And we were watching the TV in Houston, the clubhouse, and we waiting for the break to beat um, or Philly or Philly beat the break. I don't know who. Philly beat the break. So we were watching that game, and then when they complete, when they end the game over there, we start celebrating. I was like. Wow, we did it! I did it again. This is now we go like like the same. The same thing happened in eleven. Same thing happened. Same thing happened in OC. Same thing happened in in, in eleven. The soon we got, we know that we got in. That was game over for everyone. I think That's that might happened. have been the best celebration we've ever yeah, had too. Yeah, because we knew. Yeah, we knew. We knew. Everybody knew. We everybody went knew. nuts. Yeah, that was crazy. Everybody knew. Like if we we got the team that if we. We got a chance to get in the playoff. They're going to be in trouble, and that's what happened. What people don't know is that the only reason we won, more than David Freeze and all that, was because of me and you eating those magic fruit snacks. <laughs> we ate a lot of them. <laughs> we had magic fruit snacks that, that Kyle and I would eat, uh, especially in Philly. We uh, crushed yeah. some magic fruit snacks. We, we were, he and I brought out a thing. He and I weren't playing, so we, we had fruit snacks we were eating on the team. Yo, come on, guys, fire it up. You know, let's go. We can do it or whatever. Fruit snack. We'd score a run like, these are magic fruit snacks. And so every time we needed a rally, we'd run inside, get some fruit snacks, and hey, you better eat your fruit snacks. By the end of it, we were like, uh, fruit snacks. <laughs> we ate thousands uh, of calories. We worked it. We won the game. It worked. Yeah. Hey, that series, let me tell you, that series against Philly, that was one of the best series I ever played. I mean, that game five, that was unbelievable. And we were down by one. We were down one game, right? Lost the first Lost game. The first. Uh-huh. Second game, Cliff Lee was winning four nothing. Yeah, and Cliff Lee was incredible. Yeah, and then we came, we came back. back and won. Yeah. I mean, if we go down two nothing, yeah, we, it's, it's over. over. It's probably over against yeah. that team. So, what do you guys? What have you guys learned from each other throughout your careers? Biggest takeaway from Adam and Adam. Biggest takeaway from Yadi. I think I start. I think to be a better person, that's why I teach. Be a better person, better, better teammate, um, better family man. I mean, I'm I'm so glad to be part be next to him. I love this man like my brother. <laughs> and he knows, I mean, he knows. <laughs> but I mean, just, that's what I learned. I mean, obviously I know what type of player he is and how he care about the team and everything, but 
outside the line, he teach me a lot. So I'm just thankful to have him. Thank you, bro. Good. Good. Jimmy Zone. <laughs> I think what Yadi's just shown me so much is that no matter how great you are, you got to keep working. The professionalism that comes with Yadi or, you know, everybody that comes over here, they said, I got here at 6 a.m. When I got here, he was in the cage doing these little receiving drills with his bare hand. And he's already been there. And he's already sweating. And I, he's like, I thought I was being early. And it's just, God, he never stops trying to get great at this game, you know? I don't like to take anything for granted. I mean, I, I, I would like to enjoy this game. Obviously, it's some point it's going to end it. And I just want to keep going, you know, the long, the long as I can. I'm, I don't take anything for granted. Honestly. Did that come from Albert? Because that, to me, of all the people I played with, that was the most impressive thing about Albert to me. Yeah, he worked He was hard. the best yeah. in the game, and he still never acted like it. Is that, is that where it came from? I think so. I think so. And the mentality that Dave Rickett, Dave Rickett was a big part of that, too. And Okendo, you know, Cheito Okendo. Um, they, they pushed me so hard about being working. You get this, don't, don't, don't take it for granted. Just keep working. You want to get this the next year, and the next year you want to do this work. So I... I always remember that. Yeah, I mean, you can get like one goal growth one year, but if you just sit down and get comfortable, I mean, you're gonna. I mean, you you're not gonna get you are not gonna get to to the next to the next level, and that's what happened with me. I want to get more and more and more. Last year we were sitting on the couch in the film room, me and Jed Jerko and Matt Carpenter <laughs> and a couple other people, <clears throat> and Yadi just got hit in the face and he got hit in the knee and he got hit in the you know what. And we're like, ah, man, this dude just takes a beating. What is he going to feel like when he's 65 years old, you know, just thinking about his aches and pains? And Jed goes, I don't know. He's probably going to have, like, two hits and, you know, and, and played 135 games. And it's like, you know, you're probably right. This guy, he's like, at some point it's going to end. I don't know. It might not end. I mean, the guy just hey, well, is incredible. Hey, well, hey, well. He's got an Energizer Bunny battery inside of him at all times. Hey, well, I don't like to think about it, but it would be Oh, we we know, but I mean, I don't like to think about it. You, you look at the Cardinals over the over the years, and and there's 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 so many guys that are staples, that are names that people remember and still talk about in the clubhouse 15, 20 years from now. You guys are going to be that. You set the standard for catching and what that looks like in the Cardinal organization from a leadership standpoint and things that you've accomplished in your career. What does that mean to you guys to know that you're still going to be, even though you won't be in that locker room in twenty years, maybe in, in a player's uniform you're still going to be talked about almost on a daily basis. And that's great. I mean, that's a great honor to, to have, you know, to, that's why we work hard. That's, that's, why, that's how we, we do the right things. We do the right thing because you want to be remembered and to, to be a good example for, for the young guy, for your son, for your family, for, for your teammates, for, 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 for whatever. And, and that's, why, that's the way I think it. I mean, I'm working hard because I want to put a good example just for this team, for this organization, and for your family, and um, to people to remember that, that I was working hard for them. Yeah, I think he nailed it. What matters to me is that when people look back, they go, yeah, he was a good player. The man was a great teammate. You know, that's important to me. I mean, that's important to, yeah. to Yadi. I mean, that's just, just knowing that we were there for guys, but we didn't turn our backs on anybody, that we were always, we were always there, you know, if they needed us. <clears throat> That's, that's more important. So post-career, I know you don't want to talk about it. It's going to come at some point. One of the things that set the Cardinals apart, I think, from a lot of organizations is you still have guys that come back. Ozzy's in camp, Carp's in camp. Guys come back, they're around during the season. They still have you know, the, the Cardinals Hall of Fame and things like that. Do you envision your guys being, do you envision being involved post-career and coming to spring trainings and still showing up in St. Louis and, and being a part of that? Yeah, I will. I will. I lo we love this game so much that I mean, even when when I retire, I would love to come back and try to teach the young guy, um, because that's us. I mean, we love it so much. And they, I mean, they pay me to be here. Obviously, this is a job, but I love being here. I love being in that cage. I love teaching. I love uh, every 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 second to just to be here out here talking with with old guys like Bueno, <laughs> talking with your coaches. You know, like I just love it. I mean, I, I could do it every day. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't add anything to that. You know, when I get opportunities to teach what we've learned over the years, I love doing that. I, now, I, I could not be a nine to five or a, 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 
10 to five, 10 to midnight coach like yeah, these right. guys are. Our coaches right. put in so many hours. So yeah. It is incredible. More than players. Way, Way more, more than players. players. Uh, I got too many kids for that. <laughs> you know, you know, I got too many kids. Yeah, we both got too many kids for that. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, you want you want to spend time with your family, but right. also if you got the chance to come over here to the case, in my case, to go with the catchers and and teach you what I've been told in the past. I mean, that's awesome. That I would do that. Yeah, that 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 sort of is what we're made for. I think yeah, a little bit. Is. Yeah, but um, the Cardinal fans, I think it's going to be good for our souls to go back and see them every now and then. Maybe mm -hmm. throw out a first pitch or whatever. So yeah. Well, I appreciate your guys' time. Appreciate everything you've done for the game, for me personally, for the organization. Uh, you guys are two of the best, and uh, it's been uh, it's been fun to sit down and chat with you guys. Thanks, Thank Kyle. you. Thank you.